Welcome everybody to our webinar, our presentation here all about radio imaging. My name is Ray Palermo. I'm the community manager here at Radiotomy. And on the line with us today, we have Justin Case from Ben's Town. Trying to say that with my best voiceover. Hey, Justin, welcome. Very impressive. I think I might uh, consider you for the roster next, Ray. Great. <laughs> I'm looking for some extra gigs. So today we're going to talk about radio imaging, audio imaging specifically. And as you know, we work with at Radiotomy tens of thousands of broadcasters that's both internet only and AM, FM, terrestrial broadcasters using the internet to expand their brand. So we kind of, you know, some of the folks who are going to be listening know Ben's Town. They know the reputation that you guys have that's stellar in the industry. But some people listening might not know you. So tell us a little bit about Ben's Town and what you guys do there. Absolutely. Uh, Ben's Town is an international radio syndication and uh, voiceover company. Um, we specialize in production libraries, um, which is going to be one of our main focuses of this call today. Also, uh, radio station voiceover, custom imaging production, uh, jingles, and uh, long-form radio programming. Um, and most of our uh, work is available for barter through radio stations, but uh, with the internet uh, and online radio stations taking such a, a prominent step uh, to being uh, on the forefront of what's happening in radio, certainly uh, something that we're really excited to be partnering with you guys on and uh, sharing our production library and, and different imaging services um, that we do for radio stations all over and, and certainly now online. Awesome. And, and I wanted to highlight that I am talking to Justin Case, who is the Director of Programming and Imaging um, at Ben's Town. So it's so glad that we're actually able to talk to someone who's been in the industry a long time, has seen all the changes, has seen what's going on, um, and all the different types of needs that radio stations are focused on. And, and I think, you know, you guys have sort of seen it all. And when we look at the libraries that you offer and the scope of content, talk a little bit about that breadth that you guys look at. I mean, you're, you're clearly experts on sort of the really range of genres. H how do you do that? <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, it's it can be a challenge, but uh, it's it's a challenge that we love uh, taking on. You know, we we started with only a handful of formats when when the company first launched uh, back in in 2009, and um, we have uh, 20 production libraries now, uh, covering everything from a Christmas uh, specific library to uh, news talk, country, CHR. Um, all of those different things. We've got, uh, obviously, uh, myself with uh, our, our CEO, Andy, uh, who is in our Germany office, which is where the company started. We oversee the, the content and curation of the libraries. Um, certainly, you know, we try to be as, as topical uh, driven as possible with anything that's happening in pop culture and in the formats uh, specifically. Um, you know, the MTV VMAs are coming up in August, and so certainly the CHR Rhythmic uh, libraries will have uh, promos and sweepers and content that will cover those. They'll also have uh, clips from previous shows and that type of stuff. Uh, so people can really identify uh, their radio station uh, with their listeners. I think that that's kind of what it's all about, you know, imaging is really uh, the image of the radio station outside of the music. You know, certainly the music speaks for itself, and, and what you listen to can certainly tell a lot about. You can tell a lot about a person based on you know what type of music they listen to and, and what type of radio station they do. And then the imaging kind of enhances that brand and enhances uh, you know the image of what you're already portraying based on the music you're playing. So um, you know, for an AC radio station, it might be a little more down tempo or you know a different type of vibe, not as in your face as a CHR would, uh, would be, not as the kind of overly uh, produce very very high production values um, and, and same thing you know on a, and a sports library like adrenaline it's, uh, it's it's very heavy on the writing side of things there's a lot of stuff a lot of moving parts um, in those promos and in the content and we like to cover that in, in a very humorous way sometimes with our imaging director who oversees that library um, and so it's uh, it's a lot of stuff to cover certainly you know on this on the serious side of things on the news talk side, um, you know, we cover the daily news, and uh, certainly we can do, we can uh, make light of some situations, but most of the time that's, you know, the responsibility there is, is simply reporting the news and letting people know what's going on and give the stations, giving the stations um, the ability to have a turnkey solution um, to providing the type of content that, that, uh, that people need and to, to keep them informed. Um, and so it's uh, is, uh, is, is quite a responsibility and, and one that we take very seriously. 
Well, you guys have obviously been doing it for a while and have been working with thousands of product, of professional stations. And what we want to talk about today is how can we bring some of that expertise to the internet with some newer stations, um, both newer stations and maybe some of the traditional broadcasters creating new content on, on uh, online. Obviously, it's important that imaging come along for the ride, whether you're you know, new to radio or you're a seasoned pro. But before we get to sort of breaking down imaging and, and how, we, how you guys do that, uh, we saw that you we were so happy that you used Radiotomy to create Ben's Town Radio, so we want to um, First of all, promote that, and you can check that out at benstown.com forward slash radiotomy. You can also catch it on the Radiotomy website at radiotomy.com, and soon it will be on iTunes and tune in. And so it'll be really fun to, uh, you know, to listen to the station and hear what the experts are doing when they have an opportunity to put that in their own hands and, uh, and show you how it's done. So it's a great station, by the way, guys. Really love it, and it's been a lot of fun to listen to that. So, again, that's Ben's Town Radio now available. Um, so let's talk. Let's step back a little bit and just sort of uh, get everyone up to speed as to what exactly are we talking about when we say audio imaging. Can you sort of break it down? What's your elevator pitch for audio imaging? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's, um, you know, like I said uh, just a little while ago, audio imaging is, to me, is, is really kind of the, the image of your radio station outside of the music. It's how you present yourself. It's kind of how you dress or how you, you frame a picture. Um, uh, Dave, Dennis, uh, or as we call him, Chachi, uh, the president of our company here, likes to use the analogy of a picture hanging on the wall and it being a very beautiful picture, but without a frame, it just doesn't pop quite as much. You know, you can walk into an empty room and, and see a, a, a very nice picture just kind of taped up on the wall. And, uh, you know, you might not pay as much attention to it as if it had a great, big, bright, you know, fantastic frame around it, wood grain or, you know, the scratch-resistant glass or any of that type of stuff that kind of made it shine and made it pop out and really made you kind of look at it and, and focus um, on that image in that room. I mean, especially with radio and all the stuff that's going on online and just in audio today, there's a lot of noise out there. And, and how do you stand out? And I think audio imaging is, is one of those ways that, uh, that people do stand out. Um, it, it certainly uh, helps, uh, uh, it helps people uh, define themselves in the, in the space that they're in. If they're a rock station, if they write uh, you know, very funny um, imaging pieces, uh, certainly people will remember that. That will help brand them um, you know, in, in a way that will stick in, in people's minds. You, know, you hear things and you, you believe in brands because you see who they are and what they are, and imaging can be very transparent in that way. Um, the way you present, uh, you know, the voice of the radio station uh, certainly can make a huge difference. The way that it's produced, if it's, uh, you know, a CHR station, if it's, um, you know, EDM is a huge thing right now, electronic dance music, and if you're a CHR station that plays that type of music, your imaging might lean that way. It might have that type of energy, or it could be, you know, kind of a, a more uh, played down version of that. Um, there's all types of different ways to image your station and, and to, to present yourself and to dress yourself in a certain way. Um, and I think that that's what audio imaging is. It's a, it's a way to dress your radio station, and it's the image of, of the station outside of the music, something that makes you stand out and, uh, and, and explains to people who you are. We're really seeing that stations are, in, in essence, communities of people. I mean, one of the great things about Internet radio is that instead of listening alone, like you would on a Pandora or maybe even a Spotify stream, when you're listening to an online station or a terrestrial station, you're listening with other people. It's a community event. It's a shared experience. And really, when you talk about imaging, you're talking about lifestyle. You're talking about you know the broader way that uh, the soundtrack of your life, if you will, and stations you know really lead into that. I think I think one of the things with new broadcasters, and you know, we here at Radio Me are bringing on thousands of new broadcasters into the mix here, and oftentimes they, you know, sort of leave the imaging thing. They have a cousin who did voiceover once, and you know, they got the you're listening <laughs> to, and, <laughs> and that's it. So tell us a little bit, you know, from your experience, why is it so important that stations focus on imaging and, and not leave it to the last and, and, and just sort of throw it out there? 
Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, anytime a new radio station launches, one of the most important parts of that radio station um, is the imaging. As like you said, it's, it's building the lifestyle and, and focusing on, on what brand you have. And I think that that is a very important part. Like you said, you know, people uh, in this type of, of medium listen as a community, as they do in, in traditional uh, AM, FM radio. It's a community-driven thing, and it's something that people really um, engage with, and they engage with really good content and stuff that they believe in and, and feel you know, a responsibility with and something that's, um, you know, I think that the radio stations feel a big responsibility too is to represent their listeners in, in a way that's, uh, you know, makes everybody uh, shine such a positive light on them. Um, you know, it's, it's very important to uh, leave an impression on your listeners and, and tell them where they are and, and, and why they are where, where they are. You know, I think that's, um, it's, it's one thing to play music and, and that's fantastic, but, you know, I, would I ever listen to a stream that was – that didn't have that type of framework, yeah, probably, but would I remember where it was? Would I remember how I found that stream? Would I remember, you know, how I even got to that music channel? I don't, maybe not. Um, you know, it, it depends on, on how you got there, I suppose, but certainly if it's branded and it has, you know, a recognizable name and a recognizable voice and, and writing and, and, a, and a style that really connects with me as a listener and as a group, of, as, as a part of a community, and that really leaves a huge impression on me. That sets an appointment for me to want to come back and want to continue to engage with that brand and with that radio station. And I think that that's why, you know, imaging is very important. Um, you know, you can take uh, like the Jack FMs, for example, that are a big staple in, in, in lots of big markets all over the place. People obviously love the music and they love the variety that's on that station, but they also love the writing of the imaging and the material in between the songs and that type of stuff people wait for it and people want to be engaged by that they feel as if they're a part of that community based on you know the really clever witty funny things that the guy says in between uh, the songs and how it's written and I think that that's a you know a true testament to to branding something and continuing to have people come back and feel as if they're a part um, of that uh, of that community and of that radio station. I love it. You guys are so busy that, that you have calls <laughs> coming even right now. This is how busy they are. <laughs> That's all right. I love it. So I think what's, what you're really talking about is, is how can we stand out. And, and I think, you know, the exciting thing about digital is that it's brought a lot more content to play. It's, it's brought a lot of more content to the forefront and all the different distribution. But that's also tough because, you know, where where do you begin? How do you start to build an audio image for your station? What kinds of questions do you ask when you have a new customer, whether it be internet or a you know an AM FM station that's branching out and starting some new digital content? What do you ask them? How do you get a feel for beyond just their genre, um, who they are and what they're trying to create? Sure. You know, I, I think, like you said, beyond the genre, I think that's obviously one of the most important parts of it is, is what format is the radio station and, and what type of feel is it going after. Um, you know, beyond that, I think, you know, the tone in a person's voice and, and the voiceovers, you know, actual delivery makes a huge difference. A lot of people uh, sometimes for a CHR station like a big, boomy voice, you know, the big classic kind of uh, uh, voiceover artist. But then, you know, there's also a, a new tone in voiceover nowadays where, a lot of commercials, you'll, so, you'll so certainly notice this on, on TV commercials as well. It's, it's kind of the, the real guy, you know, somebody just kind of talking to you and, and telling you wh where you're at and, and why you're there. Um, you know, we want to get a, a real depth and a, and a breadth of, of what they're looking for in terms of a voiceover artist, and then we'll suggest voiceover artists based on that part. Um, you know, after we go there, and in terms of, of custom imaging a station, um, you know, for me, um, when I look at it, I, I try to – to go in a couple of different levels. How intense do you want this to be? How kind of, you know, in your face do you want this to be? Do you want it to be um, beat match? Do you want it to be uh, written? Is, is writing the most important thing for you? Um, sometimes, obvi obviously, writing is, is very important, and the way you present your message matters a great deal. But um, sometimes you can, you can, in imaging, you can let other pieces do the talking instead of the writing. You can let, um, you know, real listeners, um, if you have access to something like that, which we do have in, in the Bitsound libraries, uh, you know, real listeners talking about the music or talking about artists um, or something like that. that. That type of stuff, I think, when you hear um, you know, people as such you know, just that are just like you, that are just listeners of, of great radio, talking about you know the music and the artists that you like as well, and 
why they like them. I think that that certainly you know makes a big difference as well. Um, you know, urban radio. Uh, there's such a there's such a, a lifestyle behind urban radio. You know, and there's there's a, a whole different uh, a language sometimes slang that you would use in the writing or that you would use in um, the regular uh, the the listener audio that would help drive your message as well. So we need to figure out um, you know how much um, of the imaging is going to be just within the writing and how the production plays on that writing, or if it's going to be more about identifying the station, the name and the call letters and the frequency or whatever it might be, and then you know we brand the station and make it stand out with with other real life listeners. Um, and certainly, you know, music is a big part of. Do you want to feature music in your production pieces as well, and, and give people kind of a, a broad depth of, of where the radio station can go? You know, if you're not a typical, you know, top forty radio station, and you're playing, you know, everything from the Doors to Jimi Hendrix to uh, Sarah McLachlan. I mean, who knows what you're playing? But you want to showcase that type of stuff in your imaging as well, so you can give people, you know, a, a quick and brief but very um, thorough explanation of, of who you are and you can do that through your imaging. I love that because really what you're talking about I think is what brings people back to radio over and over again, you know, beyond just a, an endless playlist, it, which is which is one experience, but this idea of, you know, what is in between the songs? What are the what's the personality? What is the community? What is the, what are the stories that are being told mm -hmm. around the music? Because I think what brings us to music is the story, is the artist. Um, and so much of that is lost when you're just listening to tracks. But when you're able to infuse information about the creative process about the artists, about what they're trying to say in the world. Um, I think when radio stations galvanize that, it's it's really exciting, and it brings you back more That's and more right. and more. Yeah, and I think that you know, obviously, with with the explosion of social media and that type of stuff, the more the more info you know about the artist and the music, the better. I mean, it's so readily available. You know, people nowadays want to know who produced tracks, and they want to know who's writing the tracks, and they want to know if the artist that they're listening to is real, you know, is, is like them, is a real person that they can relate to. Um, I think the radio has, has a great responsibility in that part and in giving that information uh, back to people and allowing them to be the, you know, that community. Um, and you can do that through your production. You can, you can tell a story about how an album came together, you know, through a quick promo. If it's, you know, if you're going to give away a promo or give away an album on a, on a terrestrial radio station, you know, a great way to promote the fact that you're going to give it away is to, is if you have access to it, certainly which you would through Benstown, um, you know, you can have them tell a story about the album or how a certain song came together or something like that. And I think that that's, you know, those types of things are emotional, you know, and I think that radio is emotional. It really, it really connects with people on a certain level and they feel, you know, a, a certain responsibility to tune in and listen to people every day, you know, whether it's a jock or whether it's um, an interesting imaging piece that they might not hear somewhere else. Um, I, I think that that emotional connection, um, if you're able to do it correctly, is, is a very important thing in radio. I like that you brought the word emotion because I think that's probably a question that broadcasters need to ask themselves. What is the emotion that we're trying to evoke? And it might be different in different parts of the programming, obviously, but there is an overall kind of intent that, that an image wants to portray, and I think that that's, that's really important. What about trends? Do you guys see certain trends, um, you know, whether with, with AM, FM broadcasters or, or new broadcasters to the scene, that it, are we moving toward more authenticity, more realness, more gritty kind of in the street? Or are we getting more pro, more professional? What, what do you see trending these days in, in audio imaging, if such a thing exists? Sure. You know, I think that um, it, it really kind of varies. That can be a very regional thing as well. You know, it's uh, on the West Coast, it might be something totally different than it is on the East Coast. I think, um, you know, like I said, one of the trends that I've seen um, is moving a little bit more away from kind of the big, boomy, uh, you know, voice that you might be used to, kind of the typical um, big uh, announcer VO, and then maybe moving into more of a real guy approach to it. Um, also, some formats are, are changing in terms of their delivery, country being one of those. You know, country is the biggest format out there right now um, and is making a lot of noise, but it's also uh, becoming a lot younger. Um, and there's, there's uh, an image to, uh, to back that up. Um, we produce uh, for a morning show, Blair Garner, uh, America's Morning Show, and that, that, that morning show is, is produced um, in a manner that's not necessarily typical of, of country radio. It's, it's, uh, it's very upbeat, it's, it's very uh, young sounding, um, almost, I don't want to say CHR, but kind of almost hot AC CHR driven, whereas you know, before your typical country might have been you know, the, the, uh, the twangy uh, straw hat type of, of, of situation. 
Christian or the big cowboy hat, you know, and the hey y'alls. It, it might not necessarily be that because, you know, as as the, the listeners change, the music changes, and, uh, and and people identify with that. And and so, you know, good radio stations uh, take notice of that and, uh, and and roll with the punches. You know, certainly um, if you're in a, a certain format, you want to always be aware of what's going on and what the changes are around you. Uh, and I think it's uh, I think the pe- the listeners um, you know react to that. Well, we definitely focus here at Radionomy on handcrafted, you know, that idea that it feels like someone is in the mix and and really making this a a very authentic and different type of of experience. And but of course, what's so important is quality, 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 because even though if you're if you have a gritty kind of um, personality that you're wanting to um, to expose, you, you want to make sure that it's still professionally produced. <laughs> like nothing can <laughs> replace that, that, you know, it might be street, it might be gritty, but it better have, you know, good sound quality. And, and that's why we're excited to work with Ben's Town. And we're going to announce at the end of, um, of our program here, some specials that, that people can take advantage of. If you're, if you're a new broadcaster and you want to jump in and start to, to really see what's possible, Ben's Town has a ton of content uh, that you can help. Do you guys want to give out a little bit about what what uh, what you might be able to offer our our broadcasters? Yeah, absolutely. Um, at, you know, like Ray said at the end of this, um, we'll we'll give you guys links and that type of stuff. But if you guys go to uh, bensound.com slash radionomy, um, we'll have a jump link there, and we'll provide um, a hundred dollar value uh, for any broadcaster that wants to uh, to sign up with us. They can go in and, and download a um, hundred dollars worth of elements and, and try out the platform for yourself. See what it's all about, um, and see what types of elements and what type of content you can be able to create um, through the production libraries. I think that's a that's a huge value and, and something that's uh, that's that would be very useful to your to your audience. Now, there's everything from customizable uh, pre-produced shells in there to uh, you know uh, music beds that would match the format of your radio station to uh, street audio from people talking about their favorite artists to simple sound effects, uh, you know, countdown numbers, that type of stuff. You know, if you're curating a radio station with you as one of the DJs and you're doing a countdown, you, you can always throw in uh, countdown numbers and that type of stuff or simple sound effects or, you know, just music to talk over that might not be necessarily the song, but just something that matches the flavor and, and the tempo of your radio station. Um, and so, yeah, so, so certainly at benstown.com slash radionomy. Uh, there will be a link there, and uh, any of your users will be able to uh, to write in and get a hundred dollar value um, worth of uh, downloads from the Benstown platform. Awesome. Yeah, I think that you know there. I think there's some misinformation that audio imaging is beyond the budget of internet radio stations, and I, and I think we're here to kind of break that myth that no matter where you are in the spectrum, new, established, creating new content, uh, there is a way for you to get professional sounding imaging. And, and that's so critical for your, your growth and, and your ability to compete in this market. So thank you for offering that, and, and we're going to take advantage of that. So one thing we wanted to do just really quick is, is sort of pop through a little. Go ahead. Sorry. What was that? I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, that's okay. I was just saying that we, we are, we're happy to. We're happy to, and we hope that people uh, take advantage of it. Awesome. So we want to talk a little bit about the Radiotomy platform and, and sort of this uh, welcoming of both traditional broadcasters creating new content online and then people who might have been in the industry in the past and kind of throwing their hat into the ring in some of the new distribution outlets um, and fresh, new, passionate people who are entering this space for the first time. Uh, you know, Radionomy, what we offer is a co- an opportunity for people to create a station at no cost. And that is a big deal because in the past, to get a station up and running, as you guys know, there were a lot of barriers to entry. There was server issues. There were backup. There was programming. There was software. There was, oh, yeah, licensing. Because to broadcast online, no matter what anyone tells you, you do need licenses from ASCAP, BMI, CSAC, and Sound Exchange, not to mention distribution. So what we've done and, and why we're excited to work with Benstown is that we've sort of brought two opportunities together where you can start your own station, get it sounding professional, and have complete control over the programming and the customization, and that's where... Um, you know, the imaging comes in. And the exciting part, there's no cost to you. So at no time with our system are you ever going to see a streaming bill or a music licensing uh, bill, which is it, which is amazing because now you can get as big as you want to get and, um, and be able to really take advantage of some of the new distribution outlets that are happening online. But, you know, 
why we wanted to partner with Benstown is that we want to emphasize this is a customizable platform. So you, it's your station. It's not a Radiotomy branded station. It's not a Benstown branded station. It is your station. You bring um, what it is that's been in your head, <laughs> and we all know we've got some radio stations in our head, out and, and customize it. So when, I know you guys had some – uh, some programmers there working with the system and, and being able to create it. Um, I'm sure that that was sort of an opportunity to to sort of think, wow, what would we what would we do if we had our own station? Was that sort of a, a different um, hat to put on for a minute, just for promotional purposes? Absolutely, yeah. It was uh, it was a lot of fun and seeing how the platform works, and especially with all of the the different elements that go into it, finding the music and, and putting them into the different bands, and then you know creating all of our our custom imaging that goes along with the station and being able to schedule it and the ease of use after we uh, you know figure it out. It was it was fantastic, and so we, we had a great time putting everything together. Well, the way that we're able to do this for free, it's it's not really a big mystery, but we figured out the sort of balance between a content and advertising. And so the way that we're able to keep it for free is that we build in four minutes of ads that play seamlessly on the platform that we offer you so that you're able to um, you know, do everything for free. We're able to pay the bills. And as we grow together, there's like different revenue opportunities. So that's exciting too. But again, it always comes back to content. So as Ben's Town saw on the platform, there's ways for you to really get into the nitty gritty of who you are, what you want to say, and how you're creating your overall experience. So we break it down into jingles and podcasts and promos and voice tracks. And, you know, I know that's all sort of music to your guys' ears as <laughs> because that's really the world that you guys play in is differentiating, yeah. you know, these different types of, of content, you know. Um, I, I think that that's where people have to step back and go, you know, what is my jingle? What is my um, audio uh, in identifiers? Can you guys throw out some terms, some sort of, you know, bring some of us up to speed on, on the kind of terms that you guys use when you create audio content? What do you call those things? <laughs> Sure, absolutely. Yeah, there's uh, there's uh, you know a few different names for them. You know, different people have different terms, but uh, you know, generally speaking, uh, sweepers are the shorter, uh, quicker versions of, of elements that go in between uh, songs that could simply just identify the station and the frequency that you're listening to. It could also be you know a, a quick giveaway, a teaser, or something like that. You know, when your Rascal Flatts tickets coming up in minutes or something like that. Back into another song. Uh, um, you know, it, it can be anywhere from 20 seconds to two minutes. It just kind of depends on the programmer and, and, and what the content is. But promos, you know, are usually talking about uh, maybe a station giveaway or something like that, or maybe they're identifying the station with certain types of music. Maybe they're talking about new music that the station is playing. Um, and any of that type of stuff uh, is, is what a promo would be. Uh, there's also things that are, you know, rejoiners uh, would be something that would be coming back from commercials, letting people know that the music is going to uh, continue now for maybe it's a 60-minute commercial-free block or something like that. Um, there's also top-of-the-hour IDs. Um, a lot of stations, you know, all stations for legal purposes have to identify themselves at the top of every hour um, with top-of-the-hour IDs. But these can also just be kind of big, you know, uh, energy pieces that, again, continue to identify the station and, and brand it with uh, that type of lifestyle and emotional content uh, that listeners like. Um, and, and so top of the R.I.D., sweepers, promos, uh, rejoiners, uh, there's all kinds of different names for them. There's, you know, some people call them kickers and this type of stuff. But, you know, for the most part, sweepers, promos, uh, rejoiners, top of the R.I.D.s. And then there's jingles in there as well. Um, there's various forms of jingles, shotgun jingles, which would be shorter ones. There's all kinds of different stuff. But that would be the, the general coverage of it, I would think. Hey, thanks for breaking down some of that language that sometimes as new broadcasters we, you know, we hear and we're not really sure um, how to identify that. So that's sort of the inside lingo that we can start to practice as we talk about our imaging and, and how we're creating things. I mean, the key is, you know, just because you have a great playlist does not mean you have a great station. And I think that's really the overall message that we're trying to give today is that it's not enough to just string some great tracks together, although that's a talent. Don't get me wrong. That's an incredible art form, but it's that, not yeah, enough. That's, that's definitely a talent. Um, that's definitely a talent in and of itself is being able to uh, to pick out a great playlist. And also, you know, there's there are uh, elements called uh, uh, song brandings. Uh, we have a ton of those on on Benstown. 
uh, branding.com as well. And those, you know, can identify the radio station along with that song. It can be a piece, um, you know, that goes into that song, has the music of the song. Maybe you put the hook of the song, the, the chorus up front to let people know exactly what they're listening to right away and to let those people know that that station um, or that that song is associated with that radio station too. So how much do you guys work with the idea that stations should identify with certain specific artists and really tie back to them over and over again in order to sort of identify who they are? Is that a good idea or can that get you into the weeds in the sense that people think you're limited in your, in your playlist scope? Well, I think, you know, in, in, in terrestrial uh, radio, that's a that's a, a type of station that plays a certain way for the most part. You know, if you're a country radio station, um, you know, and you're maybe trying to lead a little bit younger, you know, the artist IDs and that type of stuff that you're going to play are going to be, you know, your Florida Georgia Lines, your, uh, you know, any of those types of guys, your uh, Luke Bryans, you know, they might not necessarily be, uh, Garth Brooks and uh, George Strait. Um, so I think that that certainly can help identify um, the the target demographic of your radio station as well. Now, if it's a Chris Brown and he's in jail again, um, do you want to play a Chris Brown ID? I don't know. Are you, are, you play, are you playing his music still? Probably. But do you necessarily want to talk about the fact that you play his music? I don't know. You know, that's, that's a really kind of a personal decision uh, for the program directors. Uh, but I do think it's a good idea to identify your station with those artists because certainly that's uh, how people know that they are going to trust uh, your choice in music. Absolutely. And then, and what we really offer you with the platform is your ability to, to, to really organize all that kind of play. And the good news is if you do get into the, into trouble with a certain branding, you can pull it and, and start again. Because once you start your station, it's always available 24 seven for you to program, um, or even go live. So let's talk a little bit about, you know, once you've got your imaging and you've got your station, I mean, with trustful broadcasters, obviously they have their signal and, but a lot of them now are creating online only stations as well as, as new producers coming to the scene. Mm -hmm. So what we want to focus on is what you, once you have your image, the important thing now is how you get out into the world, and, and that's one thing that we try to do here at Radiotomy is that we, we try to get you in the best places that we can. So we start with, obviously, the Internet um, on our website where you're going to have a station page, but more importantly, not only is the audio imaging important, but also the visual imaging. Now, because it is a digital medium, um, you know, we want to make sure that you're thinking about both the visual and the audio, which is probably a subject for a whole additional seminar. But here you see there's a player that's customizable that comes out of the system, put onto the website, but um, you can almost hear the audio imaging because the visuals are so strong. So that's an important component, as, as many know, to start building their brand. And there's a lot of great resources to build imaging, um, the visual imaging, well as well online, and so it doesn't cost what it used to, um, you know, nearly what it used to a few years ago to create a great a visual image as well as an audio image. Obviously, you need a great website, and we provide some templates, but um, any website that you have is going to pull these players in and get you on uh, going. Now, one of, the, one of the interesting things is a lot of people are not thinking just single stations. They're thinking networks, and boy, does that add another kind of realm to the branding because you have an overarching network, and now you've got to create imaging for each individual brand um, underneath that that overall ship and so that gets to be additionally that idea if you are going to build a network be thinking ahead that you can build in personality into all the different stations and still stand out as a full brand but the important thing is reach audience reach audience reach audience and obviously we try to do that through you know pushing you to tune in um, and, and making sure that it's your brand, um, both the audio and the visual brand, on all these different networks. You get your listing in, in the iTunes directory, which is a great place to be to grab a lot of people. And, of course, mobile, mobile, mobile. It's all about getting into the hands of the people who are wanting to hear. So, you know, one thing is there's, there's kind of no more excuses anymore. If you really <laughs> want to be in radio, uh, there's an opportunity, and uh, it's exciting to see some of the great content that traditional stations are building as well and pulling in social media, making sure that your station is represented on all the usual suspects there, 
And, uh, and luckily, wherever you go, so does the advertising to support the station. And hopefully you can bring in your own sponsors and start to build, you know, a real revenue uh, model here for, uh, for this medium. And, of course, we use Target Spot, which is our sister company, to make sure that that all happens. But, you know, you want to take yourself seriously as a radio station. And that means audio imaging, visual imaging, but also analytics and statistics. So what we try to do here is to make sure that you know exactly what's happening on your station day to day, who's listening, where in the world, and uh, and you can start to focus. You guys mentioned regional. If you start to see that you're kicking it in New York and L.A., that might alter your branding. Your audience may be telling you where in the world they are. And I imagine you guys, you know, obviously have to take that into serious consideration because of the traditional broadcasters focused on local content. Uh, you guys spend a lot of time looking at what, what's happening in New York versus L.A. versus Chicago. Yes, certainly. I think it's uh, it, it definitely matters. You know, probably on the on the imaging side of things, one of the biggest requests I get maybe from stations in the Midwest or something like that is, or or a place where they have you know a certain accent um, in in their dialect and the way they speak. Um, you know, if we use uh, you know generic uh, listener samples that don't necessarily match up with the region in which they're broadcasting, that's obviously a huge tell-all that they aren't being authentic with their listeners, and so that type of stuff matters a lot. Excellent. Yeah, it's really important to consider that and to see, you know, where in the world that you're you're the strongest. Well, I just want to thank you guys again. I've been listening. I've been listening to Justin Case tell us all about how to be an expert in audio branding for your station, and he is with Benstown, and we thank that team so much for jumping in with us and and helping our stations, you know sound as good as they need to sound to compete in this sort of new digital world and uh, and we appreciate you guys so much so again uh, check out the website benstown.com forward slash radiotomy and also if you'd like to start your station and you haven't yet uh, pop over to radiotomy.com forward slash create and uh, jump in and um, we'll be excited to hear what radio station is going on in your head and then you can also engage Benstown to help you sound professional right out of the gate. So thank you guys. Any last words as we let you go here today? Absolutely. Again, thank you guys so much. We're, we're really excited about the partnership. And, uh, you know, again, when you're on uh, Benstown.com slash Radionomy, make sure to click that uh, the trial link and get a, a good $100 value worth of uh, imaging download elements uh, to try out and check out the platform and uh, see if that's something that's going to help, uh, you know, drive the, the brand and the value of your uh, streaming station uh, through Radionomy. I love it. Now you got a hundred bucks for sitting through this presentation. That's not a bad use of time. That's a hundred dollar value not to get some. <laughs> hundred dollars for thirty minutes. That's a good deal. Thanks, guys. We'll we'll catch you next time. Thanks for having me.